a secret world used by criminals to buy and sell drugs. The biggest criminal trial in the history of the internet is over this morning, and so apparently is Ross Ulbricht's freedom. So it's life in prison. That's what a judge handed down to Ross Ulbricht. I've never heard of such a long sentence right. for something someone did with a computer, essentially. A life right. sentence for running basically a Craigslist website. In a way, Ross Ulbricht is the American dream. He's an entrepreneur. He saw a new market. He went for it. But Ross Ulbricht's family is living an American nightmare, one that started the moment they heard he'd been arrested. In 2011, he set up Silk Road, an underground marketplace with a libertarian philosophy, he said, to provide privacy and anonymity. But it became what was later described as a massive criminal enterprise. In 2013, we showed how easy it was to buy drugs on the site using an encryption service and virtual currency. There was still a moral code, guns and child pornography were banned, and it had nearly a million registered users. But one man was depicted as the mastermind, and his trial has far-reaching consequences for the digital age. Ross Ulbricht's mother and sister are in New York to visit him in prison, a place he currently has no prospect of ever leaving. We were both in shock. Ross had never been in any kind of trouble. He um, had never been someone that was into drugs or anything. And um, so we, you know, when we turned on the TV and started getting this full picture, uh, we were in complete shock. The punishment would prove far more shocking to them. In May, he was found guilty of drug trafficking, money laundering and computer hacking and sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. Silk Road closed, but many black markets sprung up to replace it. This case highlights the growing tension between internet freedom and law enforcement. The fantasy is that the internet will not be a source for drugs or illegality because of this sentence. The fantasy is that this sentence is anything more than just purely punitive. It was an emotionally charged courtroom. The U.S. government said six victims of fatal overdoses bought the drugs on Silk Road. I feel for anyone who's lost a loved one to drug abuse, it's a horrifying tragedy. It is, and it was terribly, terribly upsetting. To his friends and family, he is a bright, kind and principled man. Pretty sure I want to start a family in the next five years. His defense team claimed he created Silk Road as a harmless economic experiment, but gave it up after a few months and handed it over to other operators who later framed him. I want to have had a substantial positive impact on the future of humanity by that time. The authorities portrayed him as the villain of the dark net, generating millions of dollars in commissions under the pseudonym of Dread Pirate Roberts. More than a million transactions took place, but despite the size of Silk Road, the judge dismissed claims he was the fool guy, lured back by the real pirates of the ship as prosecutors were closing in. Do you think that Ross has been unfairly targeted, used as a, a political tool? I, they've made him the poster boy of the drug war. And um, so in that way, yes. Um, and I've given him an unprecedented draconian sentence that um, uh, is never given to drug dealers, no matter how big. And um, so, yeah, I do. I think they're using him as an example, which you could call a tool. A high-profile dark web conviction looked like a great coup for the FBI, but there was a bizarre twist. Two federal agents tasked with looking into Silk Road were themselves being investigated and were later charged for using it for their own gain. To have that not known to the jury is, to me, a, a big scandal. They could commandeer accounts, change passwords, reset PIN numbers, they had access to bank accounts, they could, um, they had access to write on the forum and on the marketplace. I mean, they had complete unfettered access for almost a year. And they were covering up, I assume, their stealing. And so I just think a lot of the evidence has been tainted. 
The FBI has never explained how it infiltrated the hidden servers. It is the new reality in a world of heightened surveillance. But some privacy experts say it sets a dangerous precedent for the FBI to hack any website in the world without a warrant. If it were a file cabinet or a, um, a desk drawer in a, phys in a physical location, it would be clearly unconstitutional. But they're saying because it's a laptop, it is, it, it, they don't need that kind of warrant. But a laptop is like a file cabinet on steroids. It's way more than a, a file cabinet. And so this is a big question for the digital age, very important. There's people who've said, you know, they're using this case as almost like a Trojan horse to sneak in precedent to control the internet and also to bypass our protections. I think it's an opportunity, almost a duty, to talk about um, what I've seen up close and personal about what the government does and how they operate in, in convicting a nonviolent person um, and sentencing him to basically being buried alive uh, for the rest of his life for something he did when he was 26. Lynn and her daughter could be making this trip to see Ross for the rest of their lives. He begged the judge to leave a light at the end of the tunnel and leave me my old age. She said she wanted to deter others. But the market has continued to grow as his family continue to fight for an appeal on the Free Ross website. To think of my brother never being free again is really upsetting. So, um, like in my timeline, thinking about Ross, I just think about the appeal. And that's as far as I can go because we're never going to stop fighting for him until he's out. So I just can't even think about any longer than that. I know if he went, le left that building tomorrow, he wouldn't go build another Silk no. Road. He wouldn't be on the other side of the law at all. The punishment is way beyond the crime. And this is a country of second chances. And um, I, not only Ross, I'd like to see a lot of people get a second chance. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs> he conceded it was a naive and costly idea he regrets. The pioneer has been prosecuted, but it's uncharted waters with big, era-defining issues to navigate. Um, I don't know. You got any more questions or should we wrap it up? Yeah.